So welcome to my games of the year for 2022. My god, there was some amazing games this year and I got a chance to play most of them and that's where I'm going to come in and ask you guys, let me know what your favorite games of 2022 are because there's only so many games I can play. I'm sure there's been a bunch that I've missed but I would like to hear what yours are down below. Okay, we're gonna start off with the obvious ones, the three obvious ones. Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, and God of War Ragnarok. Three games that are absolutely up there for me as the games of the year. They're, they're at the top, they're at the top. What did you guys think of Elden Ring? I mean, when I first played Elden Ring, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't realize it would be such an open world game. The gothic setting, I was terrified and in heaven and I had some rage inducing moments but I kept slogging on and I adore the game. I think it's crazy what they were able to do with that game alone and that game absolutely is a game of the year for sure. Mesmerizing stuff. Couldn't believe what they were able to do in their first outing that way with an open world game. Now, Horizon Forbidden West, we kind of expected it, you know, because we played the original and this is a sequel, a follow-up. And I want to say it's a great sequel, it's a great follow-up. Great open world, like the last game, but what I enjoyed the most was the storyline. The continued storyline of Aloy. Very fascinating stuff. Really loved the game, the gameplay. I just like the, the kind of zoids, the biomechanical machines in the world. I like the history of the world as well. Everything is in ruins, but there's technology there. You're able to access it. Those are the themes that I really like in this game. And yeah, with all these, uh, you know, the top three that I'm mentioning here, the graphics in all three of these are beyond reality. I played them all on PS5, completely blown away, and I was very happy to have a PS5 to play some of these games on. Now, we're coming to this one. God of War Ragnarok. The PS4 game was already up here. How could we do any better? <sighs> they just keep on doing it. The graphics are better. The gameplay is there and it's even better. Uh, the storyline is there, building on the original. And I just like Kratos with his son, the building on that story and the emotion there is something that is unexpected from a game that's just a big action game in a lot of ways but there's so much heart there and the bosses, the over-the-top action, the puzzles, things I usually don't like. I don't like puzzles in games. The puzzles in this game were balanced perfectly. If you just think about them, you'll be able to pull them off and I did and I got through that game and I really love God of War up there as an absolute game of the year. Dare I say, maybe in the future, a 10 out of 10 game, I would say as well. Okay, this next game came at the end of the year. I was exhausted. I played so many games through the year. I'm like, I don't think I can do any more. I don't think I've got any more in me. And it was Crisis Core Reunion, Final Fantasy VII. I was like, yeah, you know, of course I'm going to play this game. It's a PSP game, a remake of that, a remaster. I'm like, I'll give it a shot. I just finished that game about three days ago, and I, I totally loved it. I totally loved every minute of it because I like it that it's an old school game now and I like it that I could just do the missions over and over and over and grind my character up. When I got to the end of that game I just destroyed because I had done so many missions and built my character up so much but it was also being able to go back to Final Fantasy 7 and revisit all of those old characters like Sephiroth and Cloud. Very beautiful stuff. You play Zack. Really neat because it's the lead up to Final Fantasy VII and I had never played it. I had never played Crisis Core before and so I was able to get some of that backstory which I kind of knew about but playing it is something different. I just love the combat. I could go on about this game forever. Loved Crisis Core. Okay, this next game, I tell you, I wonder if in time it'll become a bit of a cult classic. It was one of the biggest sleeper hits of this year, and that is Ghostwire Tokyo. I did a first thoughts video on it. I played quite a lot of that game, and I knew when I was playing it, I'm like, this game's not gonna catch on. I would recommend that you pick this game up on the cheap. Definitely get it. Definitely try it out. 
It's an investigation game in Tokyo, and I just love the combat, how you can see your hands, you're doing magical spells and things like that, manipulating the environment. Really interesting stuff. I really like the enemies, I really like the design of the world. It was a really fun time, and it really, it's a really bit of a, a different game. And one that I recommend because it's not one of the mainstream games that everybody's kind of like, oh, I gotta play that game. It's kind of over here, and I recommend you go over here and try it out. As I say, get it on the cheap. Okay, for this next one, I know, blasphemy, right? I can say this, I'm not a huge Kirby ma guy. You know, I was gonna say Kirby man. I'm not a big Kirby dude. I'm really not like crazy about Kirby. I think the character's fine for anybody who loves the character. Great. But I've always kind of stayed away from the Kirby games over the years, until Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. I was really sick this year, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna just gonna order something fun, and something that I would not normally order, and I ordered this game, and I start to play it, and the charm, the charm just washed over me, and the play mechanics, and all of a sudden, I fell in love with Kirby. I did, and I'm somebody, as I said, I'm not against the series, but it's not one of my go-to series. And all of a sudden, I'm playing this game and I was in love, and to be honest, I was really sick, and this game made me feel a lot happier because of the visuals and all the charm and the fun of the world setting and Kirby. I loved it, and this is one that I, I really recommend. It's just, it's a good family game, a really, a lot of fun overall. Okay, my wife had a crazy year this year with Xenoblade Chronicles. She finished two, Torna, and then the third game, and that's what I'm gonna talk about here, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Remarkable game, I mean, I sat down with my wife and we played this game. I basically watched her play this game, and it was amazing. I mean, just the world building on the Xenoblade series, great stuff. I mean, I think we've hit the level, the, the ceiling, for what you can do with the Nintendo Switch with this game in the way of graphics. I was really amazed what they could do, but I'm telling you, as an RPG fan, this game is so in-depth. There's so many side missions, so much to do, so many enemies. The, de the design on the enemies alone are so fantastic. Everything's so colorful, so detailed. A brilliant game, an absolutely brilliant game. Definitely there is a, a game of the year. Okay, Live Alive. A game from the 90s that came back. Nobody was asking for it. We were happy to get it. And I, I gotta tell you, I really love playing this game this year. I can't tell you how much I love playing this game. And you, so what you do is you play as different characters' lives, and you can play it as a Western guy, or in the future, in a spaceship. It's crazy, or you know, as a samurai. There's so many different ways to go about things. You can go to feudal, feudal Japan, China. It's all there. You can do all of it. And you just play each little game for a short amount of time, and live this person's life and it's really fascinating, and it's really fun, and yeah, I got a lot more emotion out of it than I should have, I think, but I loved the game, and I loved how it all came together in the end. An old school game, remade, remastered, in a beautiful way, and one that we weren't asking for, but as I say, we were very happy to get. Okay, my favorite fighting game of the year is, drumroll, The King of Fighters 15. And this game is not a perfect game. I don't think all the graphics are ideal. I think some of them are really good and some of them are okay. Uh, no pun intended there. Um, but yeah, I, I, but I've gone back to this game so many times. If there's ever, I got like an extra 15 minutes, I'm like, King of Fighters. And I'm playing it, playing as Terry Bogard, having a great old time. It's bringing all the old characters back, which I absolutely adore. But it's those old school mechanics that I've grown up with. I played the King of Fighters since 94, and we're on the 15th version of the game now, and I like it. As I say, some of the backgrounds are incredible. Some of them are not so good, and it's very inconsistent that way. This game, I want it to come together a little bit more. The only thing I don't like is having to buy all the DLC for all the other characters that I really like. It's like, there's too many characters that I want, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to buy all the DLC for that. But other than that, I really love The King of Fighters 15. Okay, here's a game that I initially played. I played the demo, and I thought the demo was okay. And then I played the full game, and I played it a little bit, and I was like, okay, it's okay. And then I left it for a while. And then my friend Jimmy Hopper was like, oh my god, John, you gotta play this game, it's amazing. I'm like, really? Yeah? So I went back and started to play it, and I got past where I was at, and I'm like, Okay, this great. This game is great. And that is for, I don't like the name of the game, Triangle Strategy. Triangle Strategy. Don't like the name, love the gameplay. 
The gameplay is awesome. Typical strategy fair for anybody out there. I'm a big strategy guy. I've played a lot of games over the years. Fire Emblem, Military Madness, Warsong, Langrisser. I've, I've been about all of these games for a long time. And I gotta say, Triangle Strategy is beautiful. And it plays really well. Great characters, great storyline, covering many different countries. One of those ones you gotta go in and play, especially if you're a strategy fan. You can't miss it. Square uh, Enix has been on fire this year with strategy games, so kudos to them. Now here's two games that I wanted to include, I wanted to include on the list, because they're kind of like the black sheep of this year. They're under the radar, and I think that they deserve to be above the radar. And that's for the Deerfield Chronicles and Valkyrie Asylum. Yes, two games that I think are not getting the love that they deserve. They are more budget titles for sure, and Square really didn't push them the way that they needed to be pushed. So I think a lot of people were like, oh, average games, I'll pass. I want to say that both of these games have a great amount of fun. They're both very different games. Valkyrie uh, Elysium is more of an action platforming adventure style game, where the Deerfield Chronicles is a real-time strategy game, but both have very fun gameplay. That's what I want to say. The storyline in Deerfield Chronicles is very interesting. Valkyrie Elysium, not as much, but both games are worth uh, jumping into, especially if you can get them at a more discounted price. Check them out. Okay, I have to mention this little treasure of a game this year. My friend Rob fell in love with the game. We were playing it together. I was playing it on my own. And that is for Tunic. Tunic, yes, we have seen this style of game before, but it is so charismatic, it's so charismatic, you have to play it for yourself. And we played it on Game Pass, because we both have Game Pass. We're like, oh, we'll try this little game out. You're playing as a fox, it's very Zelda-inspired. And then you start playing and you're like, oh, this is this is really charming, I really like this. And you gotta find out the manual pages as you find them, and you can piece together the gameplay that way. And so many secrets to discover. But I had to mention Tunic, because I don't think it's going to be on a lot of people's list this year, and it definitely deserves to be there. Okay, TMNT, Shredder's Revenge, what an incredible game. That dropped, and I think everybody just dropped their money and grabbed that game. I know I did. I was like, I've got to play Shredder's Revenge. I played it, and the love and attention to detail to get TMNT right was second to none. They did such an amazing job on every single level, all of the characters, all of the moves blown away, a real love letter to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, something I grew up with, that I was playing it and I just had a big smile on my face. It just genuinely made me very, very happy. Just like the Cowabunga collection as well, uh, you know, which was this collection of Team and T games, but this was doing brand new things, but in an old school way that you could just jump into with your friends online or couch co-op the way it should be. That's the way I enjoyed it for sure. Gotta say that, Shredder's Revenge, what an amazing game. And a couple of collections here. The art collections are not new games. They're collections of old arcade games that I adore from my youth. So for me, these are all my games of the year, uh, even though there are old games, because they've been collected and I can play them all in one place. And that is for Capcom Fighting Collection and Capcom Arcade Second Stadium. These games are jack full of every single old arcade Capcom game I could ever dream of. And I got a small tier being able to play some of these, especially games like uh, Red Earth Warzard. I was like, oh my God, I get to play that game. And so many old great classics from the day. So I like those collections. If you're like me, you like old school arcade games, check those collections out. And I'm gonna end with one more game, one little game, and that's Scorn. Me and Rob played this at Halloween. Perfect game for Halloween, a HR Giger puzzle game. That's what I would like to call this. A lot of people went in there expecting it to be an action game, an action game, and there's action elements in the game, but it's a puzzle game. Going around, you're trapped in this weird place, you don't know who you are, you're interacting with the environment, it's surreal, it's creepy. HR Giger inspired art at its finest. I was at home and I was very creeped away by this game at the same time. It makes you feel very unsettled and that's the way it's supposed to make you feel. That is for sure. So guys, I'm gonna ask you, what are some of your favorite games of 2022? Let me know down below. So those are my games of the year, guys. So anyways, guys, until next time.